In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a list of every food you can eat on the carnivore diet. The carnivore diet is a way of eating where you eat only foods from the animal kingdom, meat, fish, and animal products. Eating this way can help to reduce inflammation, accelerate weight loss, improve digestion, and more. The carnivore diet can be used long-term, but also short-term as an elimination diet. When considering the carnivore diet, a lot of people think it will be hard to follow because there isn't much variety. And of course, that's true. You are cutting all vegetables, fruit, nuts, seeds, and grains out of your diet. But that is also one of the best things about the carnivore diet, the simplicity. If you do like a little bit more variety in your diet though, don't stress. There are a lot of different types of meat and different cuts of meat that you can include on the carnivore diet. And that's what we're gonna get into today. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, feel free to share and make sure to subscribe. And make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook where I share new posts every single day. Now I did a video a couple of weeks ago that had a list of foods containing zero carbohydrates and that list did somewhat apply to the carnivore diet but it was mainly aimed at the keto diet. Today's video is going to be entirely carnivore focused. And make sure to stick around until the end of the video because I am gonna be hooking you up with a free printable copy of the carnivore diet food list that we're talking about today. We're gonna to start off today talking about beef. Beef is a staple for most people eating a carnivore diet. Red meat is super nutritious and depending on the cut, contains a lot of healthy fat as well. Ribeye steak, or scotch fillet as it is called in some countries, is a carnivore diet favorite for this reason. But there are a lot of other cuts of beef to choose from as well. On a carnivore diet, you want to make sure you are eating a generous amount of fat. Because this diet is extremely low in carbs, fat is going to be your main source of energy. If you are eating leaner cuts of beef or any other carnivore diet food, you want to make sure to include added fat and I will get to some sources of this later in the video. Types of beef suitable for the carnivore diet include all types of steak, ribeye or scotch fillet, T-bone steak, sirloin, ground beef, beef ribs, beef brisket, beef shank, beef cheek, and all beef roast. Those are all the muscle meat cuts, but there are some other cuts you might want to include as well. Bone marrow, bone broth made from beef bones, beef liver, beef kidney, beef heart, beef tongue, sweetbread, and suet. While beef is a carnivore diet favorite, meat from other ruminant animals, such as lamb, bison, and goat, is also very nutritious as well. Some of the most popular cuts include lamb shank, lamb chops, lamb leg, lamb shoulder, and ground lamb. Bison has a lot of the same cuts as beef, with some of the most popular including prime rib, brisket, sirloin, tenderloin, short ribs, bison shank, and ground bison. And then we have goat, which is common in some areas of the world more so than others. The thing with goat is that it is a lot leaner than beef, lamb, and bison are, so just keep that in mind. Cuts of goat include goat leg, goat shoulder, goat rib, goat loin, and goat shank. Moving on to pork. Some people are a little bit funny about pork, but I think it is great to include on the carnivore diet, if you want to, of course. There is concern about pork being too high in omega-6, but I think this has been blown way out of proportion. The idea is you want to keep your omega-3 and omega-6 in balance and consume them in equal amounts. Both omega-3 and 6 are essential, meaning we need to consume them. And they are both converted in the body through the same pathway. If you eat too much omega-6, then not enough omega-3 can be converted. Omega-6 in high amounts can cause inflammation. And it is estimated that the average person is consuming 20 times more omega-6 than omega-3. But the thing is that the majority of the omega-6s that we are consuming in the modern world come from vegetable oil. So these are oils such as canola oil, corn oil, 
soybean oil, etc. I won't go off on the vegetable oil tangent today, but if you want to know more about the dangers of vegetable oil, I have another video on the topic which you can check out afterwards. Over 70% of the total omega-6 we consume comes from vegetable oils. So if you cut vegetable oils out of your diet, which you will be doing on a carnivore diet and you really should be doing no matter how you eat, that is most of the battle. Moral of the story is you do not need to stress out about the omega-6 in pork. Anyway, I got a little bit sidetracked there, but here are some cuts of pork you can include on the carnivore diet. Bacon, pork shoulder, pork loin, pork fillet, pork ribs, pork leg, pork belly, pork cheek, pork leg, and pork liver. Chicken is another type of meat that gets a bad rep for being high in omega-6s, but once again, I don't think it's worth stressing over. That said, a lot of people find on a carnivore diet that they don't feel as satisfied eating chicken as they do when they eat beef. So it's up to you. If you wanna include chicken, you can. If you don't, that's cool too. Cuts of chicken for the carnivore diet include chicken wings, chicken thigh, chicken drumsticks, chicken leg, whole chicken, chicken liver, and chicken bone broth. And then of course, other types of poultry include turkey, duck, quail, and goose. Fish and seafood are great to include on the carnivore diet, especially if you're looking for a bit more variety. Cold water, oily fish specifically, are an amazing source of omega-3. And if you're still a bit wary about pork and chicken because of their high omega-6 content, here's something to keep in mind. The omega-3 in seafood is already pre-converted in the form of DHA and EPA. This means your body doesn't have to convert it internally, so the ratio between omega-3 and omega-6 is less significant if you're getting it in this form. There are five fish specifically that are very high in omega-3 and very nutritious. These include salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and herring. These fish are great because you can buy most of them canned at a very inexpensive price. Just make sure you are buying these fish in spring water and not in the vegetable oils that we spoke about earlier. And as much as you can, it's really important to buy these fish wild caught as well. Other types of fish and seafood include oysters, shrimp, crab, lobster, mussels, cod liver, cod liver oil, krill oil, tuna, whiting, trout, halibut, cod, and fish bone broth. I mentioned earlier in the video that if you are eating leaner cuts of meat, you really need to make sure you are adding extra fat as well. So let's talk about macros quickly. Most people eating a carnivore diet eat fat to protein at a one to one or two to one ratio. I find for most of my clients that it works best if they prioritize protein first and then add fat until satiety. You can take your goal weight. So let's say your goal weight is 140 pounds. You want to eat around 140 grams of protein and this is protein, the macronutrient, and not the actual weight of the food. And from there, you can add fat until satiety. If you aren't losing fat and that's your goal, then you decrease the dietary fat. And if you are low energy after the adaptation phase, of course, then you want to increase the fat. Now, if you have a history of insulin resistance, you might be more sensitive to protein and it may impact your blood sugar, in which case, you will want to eat less protein and up the fat entirely. Anyway, I have a whole video coming up in the next couple of weeks that is talking about the pros and the cons of a high protein version of carnivore and a high fat version of carnivore. So once that video is up, I will link it above. Ideally, you want to be getting most of your fat from your cuts of meat and also from the fats you're cooking with. Here are some of the fats you can use for cooking tallow, ghee, butter, lard, duck fat, and chicken fat. Now, if you find you need to add more fat to your meals, of course, you can add any of those ones I just mentioned, but here are some other options as well. Beef trimmings. You can ask your butcher for this. This is what is trimmed from other cuts of meat to make them leaner, and sometimes they will even give it to you for free. Beef suet. 
which is the fat that surrounds the kidney. And this is honestly delicious. Same thing, you can just ask your butcher for it. Bone marrow, we mentioned this earlier, but this is the fatty tissue that is in the center of the bone. It's rich in fat soluble vitamins and also collagen. And you can most commonly get it from beef bones. Now let's get into other animal products. Eggs are an animal product that is so good to include on a carnivore diet. Egg yolks are rich in a lot of nutrients that muscle meat is lower in, including vitamin K2, choline, and biotin, so they complement one another nicely. Chicken eggs and duck eggs are most common. Salmon row and other fish row, which is fish eggs. These are super nutritious as well, especially when it comes to omega-3. And then we have dairy. Now dairy, obviously it's an animal product. It comes from animals, but some people tolerate it better than others. With my clients, I usually suggest eliminating dairy for at least the first week or two when they're starting the carnivore diet, see how they feel. And then from there, they can add it back in if they wish. And once again, see how they feel. Types of dairy include cheeses, especially aged cheeses, as they are lower in lactose and carbs and higher in nutrients. Okay, we need to pause for a moment to have a laugh at my expense. In my zero carb foodless video, I mentioned Monterey Jack as a type of cheese that is extremely low in carbs. Now, this is one of those cheeses that I don't think I've ever actually had. And long story short, I completely butchered the pronunciation in my last video. Cheese, goat cheese, monetary jack, mozzarella, Swiss, provolone. I appreciated all the jokes that were cracked at my expense. It was honestly hilarious, but Monterey Jack nailed it this time. Heavy cream, sour cream, full fat, plain yogurt, and kefir. I don't necessarily recommend milk as it is higher in sugar, carbs, and lactose, but some people on a carnivore diet do include raw milk, so if you have access to it, it's up to you. A few other foods you can add to your carnivore diet include pork rinds, beef jerky, collagen powder, and beef liver capsules or powder. And now electrolytes. Listen up because this is so important. Electrolytes can make or break your carnivore diet experience. Sodium, magnesium, and potassium are the three you want to be thinking about. Sodium, you should be consuming upwards of three teaspoons of salt a day. A lot of people on low carb diets, including the carnivore diet and the keto diet, find they need much more than this, but three teaspoons is a good place to start. Magnesium, unfortunately, most people, carnivore diet or not, tend to be lacking in this electrolyte. So this is one you might want to supplement. Potassium is one you need to be careful with because you can overdo it. I would only consider supplementing it if you were experiencing potassium deficiency symptoms. Spices and herbs. Now, this is a bit of a gray area. Some people eating a carnivore diet do not use any herbs and spices whereas other people use them plentifully. If you are battling an autoimmune condition, it might be best to cut these out and stick to just salting your food. But if you're doing carnivore for weight loss, blood sugar regulation, or general health, then herbs and spices are probably okay. I have another video talking about the most and the least inflammatory herbs and spices, so I won't rattle through the list in this video. Personally, I include a lot of herbs and spices in my cooking and this works really, really well for me. I get this question a lot. What drinks are suitable for a carnivore diet? It's probably not the answer you wanna hear, but the best thing you can drink and what you should be drinking majority of the time is water. Now, still water, sparkling water, both are great. Beyond that, bone broth is also fantastic to include on a carnivore diet. As I mentioned previously, it is a good source of potassium and it's also rich in collagen and other nutrients. Coffee, again, is a gray area. Some people do not include it on a carnivore diet, whereas other people do and those people do great. So this one, it's up in the air and it's up to you. And that is my very extensive carnivore diet food list. 
Now, if you enjoyed this video, I have another video that is a three day carnivore diet meal plan. And this will give you a better sense of what this diet looks like in action. As promised, if you are looking for a printable copy of the food list that we talked about today, head to healthcoachkate.com forward slash carnivore diet and enter the code word ribeye to access this list. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you might also like the videos in my new to carnivore playlist, which you can check out here. You can also catch up on my most recent upload right here. And if you want to check out my keto and carnivore diet coaching programs, you can find them here. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.